beautiful locations, sexy women, good old-fashioned death scenes, and ooh, the blood. Welcome to the Italian Giallo Movies. When it comes to Italian movies, the most well-known genres are spaghetti westerns, Euro crime, and giallos, or gialli if you want to pronounce the plural version right. I'm probably going to screw up and say giallos instead of gialli plenty in this video, so just be prepared for that. Before you had Halloween, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or even Black Christmas, you had these Italian slasher films. <laughs> The word giallo translated to English is yellow. The genre name is a reference to the paperback horror thriller books that were sold in Italy during the mid 20th century. Giallo movies are murder mysteries for the most part, but the focus is less on the mystery and more on horror and atmosphere. One of the main things I love about Gialli are the titles. They have some of the coolest titles, not just in horror, but in movies in general. Italians know how to title their movies. Five Dolls for an August Moon, The Red Queen Kills Seven Times, Watch Me When I Kill, Death Walks in High Heels, Blood and Black Lace, the list goes on. Giallo movies usually involved an unknown killer who murdered beautiful women. The films would be full of violence and sexuality. Very rarely would you not see a naked lady or people having sex or people engaging in some kind of sexual act. The killer was always dressed in black and would wear leather gloves. In many cases you would only get quick shots of the murderer and the main focus would be the gloved hands of the killer. And I've gotta talk about the blood. The blood in these movies always stands out. It's a lot like the blood in Hammer horror films. It looks so different from blood in most movies and that just makes the death scenes stand out much more. Just like in slasher films, the killer never used guns. Nobody was allowed to be taken out easily. Why use bullets when you can use razor blades, knives, ropes, and other tools that can cause a lot of pain? Of course you can't have a murder mystery without somebody trying to solve the murder. Rarely was the protagonist in these movies an actual detective. You had artists, writers, journalists, professors, but not too often was it someone who actually worked for the police force. Most of the time they would witness the first murder and then take it upon themselves to find out who's the culprit. As I said before, American slasher films owe so much to giallo movies. They owe a lot to Psycho too, but we're not talking about that right now. I'm here to gush about Italian horror. When you watch these movies, you can see the beginning of the slasher genre, right from the birth of the genre with director Mario Bava. The first entry into the genre is The Girl Who Knew Too Much, but the birth of the slasher film can be seen in Mario Bava's second giallo, Blood and Black Lace. Just watch the movie and you can see the template that slasher movies would use throughout the 70s and 80s. A house of high fashion where a masked killer stalks and kills scantily clad women. I make the argument that Blood and Black Lace is just as influential to slasher movies as Psycho. And Blood in Black Lace shows one of the main things that makes giallo cinema so great. Horror mixed with beauty. You have some brutal death scenes, but they're filmed in such a beautiful way that you can't look away from the screen when they're happening. <laughs> Of course you can't talk about spaghetti slashers without talking about Dario Argento. Argento is the most prominent director in the genre. Bird with the Crystal Plumage, Deep Red, Tenebre, Opera, and many more. Though I can't say that Argento is my number one favorite Italian horror director, he's definitely the king of giallo films. The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, his very first movie, is a perfect entry into the genre and my favorite giallo by Dario, but his two most popular ones are Deep Red and Tenebre 
Which makes sense, other than Blood and Black Lace, these two are the quintessential Giallo movies. Pretty women, leather gloves, knives, blood, you name it. In Dario's movies, the visuals always come first. Guarantee whatever of his movies you see, you'll have at least one image that will stay with you once the movie is done. After Argento and Baba created Giallo movies, everyone cashed in on the genre. Lucio Fulci, Sergio Martino, Umberto Lenzi, everyone wanted to cash in on the craze. These movies exploded throughout Italy, filling the screens with sex and blood, exploitation film at its finest. Though the genre ran its course through the 70s and some of the 80s, the legacy of Giallo cinema still lives on. As I mentioned, the slasher films from the 70s and 80s owe a lot to their Italian body count brethren. Director from Brian De Palma to David Fincher to Quentin Tarantino have been inspired by the genre, and I think it will continue to inspire people in the future. I can't hold it! I can't hold it! Oh! For those who want to get into the genre but don't know where to start, here are my top five choices. Not a top five favorites list, just the five best movies for newcomers to Giallo. So, in no particular order, number one, Blood and Black Lace by Mario Bava, one of the first Giallo movies. Number two, Tenebre by Dario Argento. If I had to pick one Argento movie, this is it. Number three, Don't Torture a Duckling by Lucio Fulci, my favorite Italian director. Number four, Torso by Sergio Martino. I think it's a shame that Martino doesn't get mentioned up there with Argento, Bava, or Fulci. Number five, The Night Evelyn Came Out of the Grave by Emilia P. Maragiglia. I probably butchered that name, but this movie has some of the best nightmare sequences in the genre. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think of Giallo cinema. What is your favorite Giallo? Have I interested you in seeing some Giallo movies? And let me know what you think of this little genre overview that I've done. I'd like to do some more of these in the future, but they do take a long time, so I'll get to them when I can. Thanks for joining me. Please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel for more exploitation and horror goodness. And please remember that the Grindhouse will never die. Bye.